Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. You know what a blue screen of death is, right? BSOD. You know, sometimes you'll be typing in Windows and all of a sudden, BAM! A blue screen appears. Well, here, I'll, I'll show you exactly. I can call a blue screen on demand thanks to the blue screen uh, screensaver from Sys Internals. Uh, you can download a blue screen screensaver from Microsoft.com. That is a blue screen of death. But it's not a real one. It's just an image of a blue screen of death. Well, I think it's an image. Uh, it's 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 kind of fun to be able to call one of these up on demand, but it's not fun when you have a blue screen of death. And Josh sent in a top five list uh, for avoiding the blue screen of death, or at least dealing uh, with uh, the effects of the blue screen of death. And uh, I thought it was, you know, it was good enough to read. I, I, I read through it. I'm like, yeah, he's he's pretty much got these right. He's he's pretty much on point. Um, you know, there's one person in the chat room earlier who was saying that uh, he had never had a blue screen of death. And I said, what what are you, a Mac user? Because that's pretty much about the only way to avoid them. <clears throat> so here we go. The top five list as submitted by Josh. Number one, check your hardware. Sometimes people will receive a blue screen of death after adding new hardware to their system. If the hardware is recently installed, does not have the correct drivers, chances are it will be unstable and crash the system. To prevent, uh, prevent this from happening, make sure you install the drivers from the manufacturer site that made the hardware. Drivers not only help the computer detect what you have installed, it will also help you not get a blue screen of death. Remember, drivers sometimes get fused with software. Make sure there are the drivers and not the software that comes with the device. Well, drivers themselves are software, but so you've got hardware and you've got your operating system. Well, the hardware needs to communicate somehow with the operating system. The operating system's got to know exactly what, what's going on with the hardware. So the hardware, to communicate with the operating system, like Windows, needs a driver. And that driver tells everything how to get along. Well, if the driver's buggy, you could end up getting a uh, blue screen of death. And, uh, you know, I've experienced a lot of blue screens of death in, in, in the past, and uh, some of it related to Vista's lackluster support for USB devices and USB drivers, which allegedly they're going to be improving in Vista Service Pack 1. This leads into number two, driver updates. Uh, drivers sometimes have updates quite frequently. Uh, if you do not update the drivers for a specific hardware device, the device may become further unstable, or just the interaction of it is it may have been fixed in a driver update. Similar to looking for drivers in the first place, but you should always look for driver updates whenever you can. A good way to check for new updates is on the manufacturer's website. Bookmark the page where the drivers are usually found. Sometimes you can sign up for updates. Check the site once a month to see if it's updated. Always uh, install the new drivers, but uh, you know, you, you've got to be careful. Sometimes you want to leave backups of previous drivers because even if it's a new driver for the hardware, uh, it may be buggier than the old driver. You never know. Uh, and if you can, make sure you uninstall the old drivers before installing the new one. Sounds complicated, doesn't it? Yeah, I know, but it's a blue screen of death, and these things aren't easy to deal with, but we do our best. We do our best. And for whatever it's worth, um, one of the reasons why Microsoft changed so much uh, as they did in Microsoft Windows Vista uh, was because most of the blue screens that happened in earlier versions of Windows were related to video card drivers. So they tried to make it better, and in some cases they did. Uh, in some cases, it, it didn't work so well. Number three, use Linux. Now, you're probably thinking that I'm telling people to use Linux when I say this, but I'm not. You can use Linux to solve a software-related issue. If you know of a certain program that's causing a blue screen of death, remove it, with Linux. It's a great backup operating system that will allow you to find good software related problems that you know are causing blue screens of death. A good Linux distribution, at least that Josh recommends, is Ubuntu, free. Uh, you can download it uh, from you know the internet. You can also use safe mode, which brings Josh to his next tip. Process of elimination, troubleshooting. When you enter safe mode, you have the options, and this is of course in Windows, you have the options to start it without networking or to start it normally. If you think it's an internet problem, or an internet related issue, uh, you know, try to boot into safe mode with networking off. That'll give you a chance to see if a blue screen is uh, happening without being or with being connected to the internet using your network card and your network card which relies on a driver. <clears throat> so having your drivers and hardware disabled uh, in, in the safe mode allows you to troubleshoot the issue without having to have a blue screen of death. By using a simple method, method process of elimination, 
you can pinpoint an accurate reason, quite possibly, why the blue screen is happening. Did you just install a new device? Try to remove it or to uh, run a system restore to see if you get another blue screen after that. Have you tried to uninstall certain software? Try to uninstall it and see if you get another blue screen. Those are examples of what he's, what he's talking about. Uh, eliminate problems that cause the issue, making it easier to find the reason. And I think it's a good, it's a good way of going, you know, troubleshooting. Uh, number five, <laughs> he needs, he's got directions here. He says, yell, avoid Windows Vista. The tip speaks for itself. Simply do not use Windows Vista. Vista is unstable, and that during this time, people have been getting many driver-related issues. Any having driver-related issues causes what? You guessed it, blue screens of death. Sure, Windows Vista may be a good operating system, sometimes when it works, but when it doesn't, you will at least know why. Try not to use Windows Vista until they have updated the problems. Second guess getting it is if you have an idea about Second guess getting it if you have an idea about buying it. I would suggest waiting for the operating system to become more stable with a service pack uh, that comes with updates and fixes and updated drivers. And uh, he's, he throws in a bonus tip about not trying to read the blue screen of death. I, I, that's accurate, but if you can, either snap a picture of it or in particular, really the only real helpful, in my opinion, the only helpful part of a blue screen of death is actually located in the lower portion it will tell you a specific module or a specific driver that caused the problem. Right here it says kdcom.dll. It's called the stop code. Well, that's not really a stop code. I wasn't going to go into the stop code. I was talking specifically about this. Right, no, but that's the, num the stop code is the number you need, and you can look it up in the, the Microsoft Knowledge Base, and it'll tell you what caused the blue screen. Except... Well, where I was going with that tip. It's, it's fair enough. If you want to copy down the numbers and search for the numbers, that's another way of going about it. Um, but the file name is an easier troubleshooting uh, because um, usually that can help you narrow down what program may have been causing the problem. For instance, I had suffered some blue screens in Vista, and my first clue was that file name more than anything else. I didn't even need to go to the internet. I said the file name was going, it was Webcam Max was causing the blue screen, some of my blue screens of death. There, it wasn't the only one. I had other issues related to, to uh, USB devices in Windows Vista. Um, but knowing what this file name was right here gave me enough information to say, oh, well then I guess I can't use that program anymore. That was causing problems. But as Alan pointed out, and rightfully so, uh, taking the stop code, these, these long complex strings of hexadecimal uh, numbers um, and searching in either Google or directly on Microsoft's knowledge base, I find that Google gives a lot more information because uh, typically what happens is people post the same errors in forums and say, here's the error I had, here's what I was doing, uh, and then you know, maybe later on in that thread someone may have responded and said, here's how you fix the problem. And in many cases, the community may have done all, all the troubleshooting for you. So there's important information on here, but don't feel like you're getting lost with what the you know what's going on. It's it is a it's a fact of life, uh, the the blue screen of death. And you know there are kernel panics in uh, uh, well, I think Linux is that what they call it in, in Linux kernel panic as well. I know that is uh, that way in uh, well at least at least in OS 10 because uh, I've had kernel panics before, uh, and it's always been related to really bad drivers. You know, when I plug in a device and the driver that comes with the, the, the product just wasn't written very well. People who make hardware tend to make crappy software and vice versa. And unfortunately, they very seldom can, they, can you find something that works like this. Anyway, do you have uh, uh, any other tips uh, to, to pass along to the community related to troubleshooting? Uh, blue screens. Certainly, Josh, this was a great list. Process of elimination, uh, excellent. You know, just trying it yourself, you'd be surprised at how much you'll learn. And once you learn how to do it, you'll, it'll be easier and easier and easier for you to be able to handle as well as for you to help other people. And that's kind of what it's all about, helping other people, sharing information. Uh, certainly, if you find a solution to a problem you've been having, you know, share it with the rest of the world. They, they probably, you never know uh, if someone else is going to need that help at some point in the future and they, they may find you through something that you post on your blog. You never know. My email address is chris at perillo.com if you have a top five list to send me, whether it's related to tech or not. In fact, I, I like the top five lists that aren't related to tech so long as you know what you're talking about. Uh, and then of course, you're also welcome to swing by the chat room uh, where uh, sometimes, it hasn't happened lately, um, but uh, sometimes you'll see me experience a real blue screen of death 
on the on my screen as I'm sitting here computing. Uh, we're typically talking tech 24 hours a day, seven days a week at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.